Hi and welcome back to my workshop. I'm Tony and if you follow me you'll know that I'm building another amazing Armatec kit and this time it is the Series 1 Land Rover um, and we'll get cracking on that in a moment but I just want to show you that my Tiger's gone, uh, it's now off uh, in its new home with my mate Andy and uh, taking its place is the wonderful little Hetzer. Um, and so it's taken pride of place where the Tiger once sat on the table but it is time to move on. Um, I will be going on to another tank building project in the fullness of time and I'll announce that at some point down the uh, line of this build. Um, but today is getting on to um, the gearbox for the, the next step for me. Now if you're at the stage of the static build where you've done the chassis and you've done the axles and you've done uh, the springs, you'll be going on to this stage which is the bulkhead and, and all of the paraphernalia and all the complex detailing that Armatec give us here out of the box. Um, however, uh, there's one or two mods I want to do to this, and I'll go over those with you shortly. Um, but if you're doing the option pack build, it will be about the gearbox, which is this piece here. So you've got the motor, the gearbox, and everything else, which we're going to assemble very shortly. We'll install that, and I'll get some power to it, and hopefully it runs as, uh, as well as it should. Um, we'll do a bit of a power test on it, a slow build up of power, and then do a full test. Um, and then hopefully nothing goes wrong, and once we've got that uh, completed, I'll be able to uh, talk to you about the mods I'm planning on the bulkhead. So in a moment, as usual, I will reset the camera and we'll get started. Right, so this is the part that um, I've been looking forward to, but also a little bit anxious about. Um, this will be the, the litmus test to see if I've installed the diffs correctly and everything is working as it should. So the gearbox is made up of the gearbox housing itself, which is these two parts here. Again, beautifully machined aluminium parts um just feels it just feels quality um and again i know i keep saying it but every time i touch these parts i just think it's amazing uh, what armatech do so um that's the gearbox housing a little bit of cleaning up to do there i may need to just deburr the sharp edge sort of around here just to help the bearing sit in correctly um, you have the drive shafts here uh, you've got the main gear which is inside this bag here uh, very clearly labeled a um, couple of bearings and of course the all important power supply or the motor um, and the actual gear mechanism itself on here um, and Armatec do uh, give you some options on this in the instructions but I'm, <clears throat> excuse me I'm gonna follow the instructions as per the Armatec uh, requirements and recommendations so now we've got everything ready I've got all my fixings uh, ready um, I'm good to go uh, so we might as well get cracking so the first thing I'm going to do here is just clean off the compound I don't know if you can see that there's some just a cutting compound that's left over, a residue if you like, left over from the machining process. So that's just a matter of getting one of my sort of wipes and just giving that a good clean up. Just to so that they get a good bond with the, with the bearing glue. That's that. Same again on that. This is such an important part of the build. Um, so I'm not going to race this. I'm going to take my time. Um, just dry that off because um, I really don't want to mess this up and as I said earlier that you know this is the the real test of whether I've installed the diffs correctly on in the axles so we'll soon see um, so super nervous but also quite excited um, I will now just uh, deburr the that's quite a sharp edge on there so I'll just uh, just gently remove that sharp edge Move the power motor out of the way. <laughs> Don't want anything getting in that. Hear you all screaming at the, the camera. Um, so that's that. It just helps. I think it just helps seating the bearing. So I'm going to just see if I can get these to fit without too much hassle. Don't want to be bashing these. Yeah, that's going to go in there nice. I can feel that already. So that's good. See about this. Well, that's gonna. Does that feel like it's gonna go in there? Oh yeah, that's gonna go in there beautifully. I'm not gonna push it in just yet. Um, and I think it it does help by just taking that sharp edge off um, and just deburr that. So move that out of the way. <clears throat> and now we can get cracking. All right. First things first. I'm actually gonna lock tight these bearings in because uh, I want these to go off fairly quickly. The bearing retainer um, adhesive does take an hour or so to go off um, and I want to get this working straight away so I'll move this back into the camera um, so that's that 
just going to try and pop that in as straight as true as possible that's in really satisfying little pop when this when the bearing goes in that's that and then on this one same thing again I am super super nervous about this part um, but I've been looking forward to it because you know this is this is what sets the this build apart from a static build you know making sure that everything works mechanically and that's again just pops in it's such a satisfying noise when that happens so that's in there again using the Loctite because I want this to go off fairly quickly so that's those two parts there now we have a shaft that will go through the gear let's just open that up over there <clears throat> let's just take the main gear out it's a hefty old gear cog that again beautifully machined um, and this is going to need a lot of grease and then we have the the other gear that should mesh with it look at that it does I don't even see that and this is what's going to drive hopefully drive the diffs are those sort of the main axles and main drivetrain and everything else it's a little bit you can see it's a little bit sticky but in time that should just making sure I'm just running that around when you do these when you do these um, meshing these gears it's really important to make sure that it's all working and meshing as it should because you don't want this jamming up um, and as I said, I'm going to put a, a quarter of a grease on this. And now the more I'm running this around, the more it feels right. Nice and smooth. So that's that and that. Um, so now i uh, just going to go and grab the fixings that I need. And uh, we'll get this all connected up. Right, so um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. So we can just talk about this quite important part. So this is your main gear here. And... Uh, Armatec give us quite a good diagram. I'm going to see if I can bring this into the camera shot here. Uh, so let me turn it around so it's, you can see that. So this here is, uh, bring it in there, sorry. This is the gear, this it being here, this main gear. Then we have the shaft. And then we have a grub screw that locks it all into place. Now it does tell you on here, it gives you sort of a side profile of what it should look like. Because the shaft is um, different. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can hold that without. Let's have a look. See that. It's slightly offset. There's a grub screw facilitator here, flat spot here, which allows you to uh, lock the grub screw in. And I think it's got to be put in in one particular orientation. Otherwise, it will uh, it will not work. So let's just pop that away. And I think that the orientation of this is we put it in so that the slotted part or the flat spot is passed through this way and then I don't know if you're going to be able to see that through that little hole here you can just you can just see where the edge of the flat spot hits or changes with the, um, the sort of the diameter of the shaft so that's what I think where it should go um, now I've got the the little M5 grub screw which will position that into the right location so I'll just pop that there like that I'll load up my grub screw on that now um, with a degree of confidence I will put some thread locker on this don't want this um, working itself loose a tiny bit of that then I'm going to put, pop this in. Let's get that in there for now. Of course, camera being on, it's uh, difficult. I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do this so that you can see it. How about that? Now I'm going to wind that back off. And what I want to do is I want to pull this this shaft, pull it. So it locks onto where the flat spot is on the shaft and the where the curved diameter is. So it's probably best if I can show you there. So I don't know if you can see that, can you? There's a flat spot there. So I'm just going to pull that through. 
with the grub screw almost down that actually stops it from passing through anymore let's have a look sorry just holding that into place this is difficult to do while I've got the camera, but anyway, that's it. Tighten that off. And that, I think, looks exactly as Armatex show in their uh, diagram. Right, so now I'm um, just going to test the gear itself inside the housing. So this is the orientation as it passes through. And that's just, just, just touching the surface ever so slightly. I think you can hear that. Now I want to just make sure that this plate fits the right way around and it should fit up. There we go. It fits up nice and snug. Um, just holding that and there we go. It's spinning beautifully. Yeah, that's beautiful. So I guess if you've got, uh, if you put the shaft on and you can't close this up, it's probably because the shaft just needs to go back in a smidgen this direction here. So that's really, I'm really pleased with that. So now we can get some grease in that and then lock this plate um, into position. So I'm gonna get some grease. <clears throat> I don't mind using my fingers because as you know, I um, I use uh, a barrier cream on my hands. So all of this comes off with no problem at all when, I come, when I'm finished. Love a bit of grease. Um, I wouldn't be shy about putting too much grease on this because it needs to needs to do its job. That's it. I wouldn't go overboard with it either. You know, you you don't want it, you know, leaking out. Just but you know, a, a good copious amount, I would say. So it just feels right. And the grease will help with the gear meshing as well. So just going to, before I <laughs> don't want to make a real mess here. So I've got two clean fingers. I'll pop that back through into there. I'll go and clean my hands. Pop that plate back into position. It's only one way it goes on, but the countersunk holes this side. Just sort of spinning that around. Lovely. Now this goes, this gets fixed together with um, <clears throat> some counter fix, sorry, countersunk fixings. Um, again, um, they're going to be in the bag that comes with the uh, motion option pack. So we'll put these in. Actually, I want to, no, wait a minute. I'm going to put some thread locker on these because I don't want them coming undone. And again, with a degree of confidence. And as I, I've said many times, if you're if you are using thread locker, um, and you're you're worried that you may have to um, undo the the fixing because it's a problem. You can always get a hot air gun on it and it will release um, relatively re reasonably straightforward and relatively easy um, without damaging the fixing. I'm just going to go diagonally opposite. This time probably not so uh, generous with the thread locker. There we go. That's about what you want. I do sometimes have a little pot and I put it in, um, uh, but that's only if I'm doing quite a lot of work. It's nice and tight. Just checking that it's working really smoothly, and it is. Um, and then we'll just put the last two fixings in. And then we'll be on to the next stage. So lump that, quite a lumpy um, piece of equipment that, got a bit of weight to it. I'm not going to be painting this either, I'm leaving it in its raw metal. Because you won't really see that. And that is that. 
make sure that goes around still. So that's that. Next thing, we'll put this plate on and we'll start looking at getting the motor installed. Right, so the next step is, from what I can work out, is the motor gets attached, obviously, to the gearbox. Um, but ahead of that, we've got a shaft on the motor and just trying to see if I can get to see this on the camera. There is a flat spot on one side, uh, ready to take a grub screw. Now, the diameter of the hole for this gear is far too big for this. So they give you a sleeve, tiny little sleeve that goes over the top of this uh, with a hole in it. You can see that, there's a hole in that. Um, now, this is gonna be tricky, but this sleeve needs to go inside. Let me just get the right orientation of that. It needs to go inside. That hole needs to line up perfectly with the hole in the gear, in the little cog itself. And then the grub screw goes through and locks into position. So I'm going to, yeah, I think I'm fairly confident I can do this. Um, some thread locker on this. This is going to need to be locked in place. Now, first thing I'm going to do, while I can see it, I'm going to take that grub screw and try and pass it through. See if I can get it to. So, I'll take this away from the camera. Yes, it's just passed through that little hole. Then I'm going to slide this over onto the flat spot. I might have to slacken that off a little bit. There we go. And I'm not sure if that goes in tight against that. It feels like it should. Now we're going to tighten that all off hopefully yeah there we go it's on there as I think it should give that a good old tight give that a wipe now we can put this plate in place and it goes on countersunk holes this side I'm going to I'm going to put it with the Armatec label pointing up I think that's about right and we have a couple of six mil m3 countersink fixings let's just make sure I've got the right tool for that and that is it again just a little bit of thread locker on this I'm doing this um, off the cuff so to speak so i haven't done a dry run on this so if i make a mistake you're going to see it and i'm hoping that by doing this um and if you are building the series one with the option pack um and like me you're not an experienced builder you're finding this helpful i don't know why that's not going in there maybe I'm going to slacken that off a tad. Just to line up the hole. Schoolboy error. Never tighten up until all the fixings are in place. There we go. Yeah, so I'm hoping that this is helping you. Um, hopefully give this, you know, this can, gives you the confidence to... Uh, to do one of these builds. Let's just see if this passes through. Yeah, feels right, I think. We'll soon find out. I can't move that because it's got resistance on it. Right, so now, put that on there, turn that upside down, and a couple of slotted fixings here which all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in, now these are 10 mil cap fixings that they ask you to put in. Um, always conscious that that's going to go through potentially into the housing, but I'm going to pop, pop them in to start with. Um, and then I'll check to see if it doesn't, um, hopefully it doesn't clash with the, with the gear itself. I don't think it will, but 
we will check so I'm not going to put these in tight tight for now just get them into the fairly loose because then the next step is to put this mount it onto the chassis Ooh, exciting times. Um, not sure. Um, after this, I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm not sure whether I can actually, once we've got it on, we've got the drive shafts connected, or do I just get the power to the motor to test the motor first? I think that's probably what the, the wise thing would be to do test the motor and then install the drive shafts. Slacking that off just a tad. So that is that part done, complete, hopefully. Uh, right, so what I'm gonna do now is I think I'm gonna get some power to this and see if I can get this to work. Right, so everything I need is here. Um, this is the moment of truth, guys. Uh, if I've um, messed up the installation of the gearbox, this is where I'm going to find out. So I've got everything I need. I've got my radio set. Uh, that's already turned on. I've um, got my battery. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the low voltage alarm, which comes with the kit. So uh, this may give you a bit of a jump. When it... There you go. And now it's a three cell battery. This is going to go through one... 37.9 or sorry 3.79 3.8 goes through all the various different um, cells on the battery to do a test um, now it may drop below let me just see if I can change that um, let's just take that up to 3.4 and then what we'll do is everything that um, if it drops below 3.4 volts it will it will sound an alarm uh, so that's that on um, now this is uh, this battery came with a Dean's connector um, now they do come with a D Dean's connector or sometimes you can get them with the XT60 connector which is this uh, very familiar yellow connector that we're all very familiar with um, but Armatech think of that and they give you an adapter in the kit I don't need that because I've got uh, loads of these in my box of bits and bobs so I'll just plug that in um, then we have the main power switch itself which is this beautifully made switch a big old chunky switch like that not sure where that's going to be mounted yet on the uh, Land Rover but I'm not going to worry about that for today uh, let's plug that in like so um, before I plug this in this is the main motor which we've attached to the gearbox uh, first things I'm going to do here is connect the uh, this into channel 2 so let me just make sure I've got channel I'll just do double check it is channel 2 and it is so let's put that into channel two. And now we can connect up this to the power supply. Now, I guess we need to put some power into, just a bit of temporary power I've got into my receiver. So let's just do that. And that should turn to green and it's just gone to green because my radio set's already on and it shows me that it's bound and communicating quite nicely so I think that's everything so let's turn some switches on and oh there's this little power switch here and let's just see is it gonna move wow it's moving <laughs> I'm in love absolutely amazing don't know if you can see that shall we just zoom in a bit there we go whoops look at that moving around now i've only got this on a very small amount of acceleration because i want the gears to mesh because this is all obviously brand new don't go hell to leather and damaging it so that just let's put a little bit more power there we go i'm just going to leave that do its thing for a while and zoom back out that couldn't be easier I, again, I know I keep saying it, I love Armatech for how they make things, our life, so easy. It's literally plug and play, guys. Um, the instructions that you get with the option packs make your life so easy. 
Um, and as long as you're very careful and very you know methodical about how you approach this, you will not go wrong. I'm already thinking though, um, uh, without the sound or audio uh, option, which will come, I will order that. Um, already, you know, when you look at all of this paraphernalia here, where is it going to fit inside the Land Rover? I mean, obviously, most of it will go under the bonnet. Um, but I've got it. I've got it. I guess I've got. I've got. Excuse me. I've got to start thinking about how I put all that together and where I put it all and how I set it all up. But not for today. So I'm going to let this run for a few minutes, and then I'll disconnect it all. Um, and then the next job is to connect this onto the chassis, connect up the drive shaft, and uh, get some power to it, and see the wheels turn or the hubs turn for the very first time. Right. So um, I've turned the chassis upside down. So I think that's going to be easier to install the gearbox and that is gearbox goes in let's just lift this up it goes in between this main cross member here and uh, it's smaller one here so in that kind of orientation um, and there's two long countersink fixings that hopefully will go into this to locate them so that's fine. Let's just put a bit of thread locker on that fixing. Because again, this is going to need to be um, in there tight as anything. I've got my angled hex tool and let's see if we can just locate that. Just using that to feel my way to that. So I'm just going to make a couple of turns on that. Okay, that's a couple of turns that's in and located let's do the next one i'm so pleased that first test went really well it's a relief i can't can't tell you in words um how relieved i am that it went so well let's just now hope the rest of it go oh there you go just found that just located that get a couple of turns on that is it going in yes it is Fine, won't do it up too tight. Not just yet, anyway. This is all going too well. Famous last words. It's going to go wonky now, you know it is. And you can see, I know, again, I've said it many times on this build, but you can see why Armatech recommend getting the option pack um, when you get the main kit. Because, you know you, you've got to do all this work to it um, and if you've already built up the the body on it i'm not sure how you do this well you obviously you'd be able to do it but um it's going to with some difficulty i would say so that's in nice and tight now we've got to connect up the the drive shafts front and rear um so i'll go and get everything i need for that and i'll be straight back right so i zoomed the camera in so we can get in and have a have a look i've turned the, the chassis background the uh, the right way um, I've also connected up the power supply um, and because as I turn this around I realized that the on this sort of part of the gearing here there's a flat spot on let me show you there's a flat spot on this where it connects to the drive shaft but obviously where I've been testing it the flat spot is around the, the other way and you can't force this I don't want to force it so I've got a bit of power on here which I can turn on and just allow it to rotate around so I get the right flat spot so I'll do that in a moment um, now these drive shafts uh, are these beautifully made pieces here from Armatech. Now they're identical in size, so you have the two parts, but they're all these are identical. They're exactly the same length, and these are exactly the same length. So there's no issue with trying to distinguish which part goes where. Um, each drive shaft is made up of one of each of these. Um, now we've got the back one. Um, just double checking on my instructions yes the back one is this fluted one here if you like um, that goes on slides onto the rear axle and i've already got the flat spot and you can see that on here the flat spot is presented upwards i just need to make sure i put this in where i can get the grub screw in now they give you grub screws and cap fixings for this and it's your choice what you want to put on it's a uh, jolly awkward but anyway it's on there now um, 
With this one, I think I'm gonna put the cap fixing on because there's nothing that's going to obstruct it. I don't think there is. Um, and on the other side, I'm gonna probably put the grub screw on, but we'll, again, I may, I may live to regret that. So I'm gonna just connect up this cap fixing, put a bit of thread locker on it. And then get that. that in on that and try and get it as tight as I possibly can <coughs> that's nice just make sure that that's yep now this bit here I need to get the flat spot of that so I'm just going to turn it on let me see if I can get some light on that a bit more light I didn't see that um, now I've got to just try and rotate the the gear around until I get the flat spot on. so I'm trying not to block the view let's turn turn it on would be good wouldn't it it's on All right, what's going on here there we go there we go, I can just about see the flat spot now. Now we're going to take this one and slide that over the, the one we just put on. Rotate that around. Get, slide that into position. But this time I'm going to use a grub screw because I don't want the a cap fixing clashing with this. This cross member. Thread locker on that. And this is the the next moment of truth coming up. Does the thing rotate as it should and drive the back wheel set? Oh, so let's just make sure I put that back on there. tight as possible wow okay so let's just zoom this out a tad what we're looking for are the wheels to rotate here let me just double check I've got everything feels right let's just see if I can get that to go oh wow again very slowly but you should be able to see the wheels rotating That's pretty smart, I'm going to be honest. That is pretty smart. Just hope the front ones go as easy as that. But um, do you know what I might do as well? I might actually, uh, when we've got the front one, I might actually put the wheels on um, temporarily just to see how they look and uh, how they perform. So that's it. Right, so that's that one. Turn all that off. And we'll go on and do the front ones. Okay, I have a problem, um, but I can get around it. So I've attached, as I did before, um, the fluted one though this time goes on the gearbox according to the instructions um, from Armatech. Uh, the problem is, when you put the other part of this onto that shaft, this has to connect to the front axle over this fitting here. Now you can see that here but you just cannot move it enough. There's just not enough angle on it to be able to get that over. Have you said that? Said, no, you can't without damaging it. Um, I just don't know how I'm gonna do that unless I move this axle forward, present the uh, drive shaft onto it and then move it back into its position. So I think that's what I'm gonna to have to do. Um, slightly annoying, but you know, again, it's one of these sort of things. So uh, I have already put a little bit of heat onto these fixings so I'm just going to release these ever so slightly just to get me some a little bit of movement on the axle I'm really annoyed because obviously I've got all this set out 
previously. And I'm not sure how you'd know that unless you discover it yourself. Let's see if there's any movement in that. Yeah, there is. Yeah, slightly annoying. I'm just gonna have to make sure that when I put all this back, it goes back into the position as I previously set it. Might have to get some more heat on that, that one. So I just need to get a bit of heat onto this. Obviously got to be careful because I've got electronics around it now. Um, so I can just get this to, unless it's going to go. Oh, it's going to go, it's fine. And I'm going to push this back now. Now we can get this on. Push it back into position. I'll go and... Um, I'm going to have to get the old set square out and make sure I've got these uh, set exactly as they should. Find the bumper, which is around here somewhere. There it is. Um, get all this put back on. No harm done, but, you know, it's one of those sort of things that um, hopefully by me discovering that's what I've got to do saves you the, the heartache of having to do it yourself. So I'm going to get the old set square out and double check the dimensions and I'll be straight back. So that's it all reset. Uh, now we just need to get the retaining grub screw on here. That was a little bit annoying, but actually like all of these things, um, so I'm just gonna put a bit of thread off again on that. All these things can be done, can be dealt with, not a disaster. I just wanna make sure I've got the flat spot. I'm just having to look, see if I can get the flat spot. There it is. Gonna put a grub screw on this one. Right, what I've got now is all tight. Now, let's see if this, let me just take this bumper off. I'll turn this round and uh, we'll get some power on this and hopefully it works as well as the rear one. All right, got the power on, everything switched on. Here we go. Yeah, good look at that. Four wheel drive. That's amazing. Really, really pleased with that. So really, apart from the one thing we're just moving the axle to accommodate the drive shaft, everything has gone according to the instructions. Um, and so far, really well. Everything seems to be meshing really well. No real bangs or knocks. Uh, just the no normal motorised noises that you get. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put the wheels on. Okay, um, wheels are on. I had to do it. Sorry, I had to do it. Um, I've only put a couple of fixings in each wheel just to sort of yeah you know, see what they look like on it, and I think it looks a beast, absolute beast. Love it. Love the way it looks. Uh, so let's get some power and start driving. Go forward. There we go. Wow, full, true four-wheel drive. Reverse. Get some steering, full lock, left and right. Really, really pleased with that. Really, really, really pleased with that. Do you know, it, it, it looks, I, I just love the way it looks. Absolute beast. Um, I, I could probably rag it around my yard right now, but I don't want to. Um, a lot of work to do to it still but i might give it a bit of a test drive but anyway i'm really really pleased um really pleased the way it's operating i was worried about the drive shafts because i've never done anything like this before and the diffs and everything else but it just goes to show you if you follow the instructions that armatec give you and you take your time be patient and build it methodically uh, you can get to this step reasonably quickly and without too much pain obviously the only work the only problem i had was the front axle had to be set set away to be able to get the uh, uh, the drive shaft on but uh, that was it everything else um, has been you know really straightforward that's amazing really 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 pleased with that okay I'll stop playing now I'll turn the power off and uh, I'll come back to camera well that's it for today's session and I have to say I'm chuffed to pieces it couldn't have gone better 
I was really super anxious about this part and it was only because although I was confident that I'd built the axles correctly and installed the diffs correctly you never really know until it's all connected up and you get a bit of power to it um, and it's only then you know it's working correctly and as you saw it worked perfectly the only thing I had to do was uh, move the axle forward to allow me to get the uh, the drive shaft onto the main gearbox. So that's done, no harm done. If you're building one of these and you've had a similar kind of setup, I, I, I'd love to know if that's the right way. I mean, I couldn't work out another way of doing it, but anyway, it's done. So the next really important part is the bulkhead. And this is it here. It sits over the, uh, the main motor like that, fits like a glove. And then we have all of this amazing detail to build up onto the uh you know the, onto the front of the bulkhead so you've got your dashboard sort of controls and speedo and all the rest of it and there's some there's some decals that you apply for that um and there's some details steering column and steering wheel and of course the whole thing needs to be painted prepped and clean for uh, prepped clean and painted um however one thing um that surprised me and it's not a criticism a criticism sorry armatech it's not um, I just assumed that the steering wheel would be connected somehow to the steering rack. So obviously when you steered with your radio control unit, you go left and right, the wheels would correspond with the steering wheel turning left and right. It doesn't. The steering wheel is not designed to be connected or, or be, you know, to, to have any relationship, if you like, to the steering mechanism of the Land Rover. So I've been looking into this and I'm thinking I'm going to I'm going to have a go at doing something. I'm going to I'm going to do um, I'm going to do some more testing. But I think I've got an idea where I could just install a little servo, split the uh, the control of the channel and uh, see if I can get the steering wheel to coordinate with the wheels. Now, I don't know how successful I'm going to be with that because it's a really new sort of step for me. But if it's successful, I will film it and I will show you how I did it. And hopefully if you're going to build one of these, it will help you do the same. And I'm going to do it with just very simple stuff, so, you know, so, stuff that you can order off the Internet and, and without any real expense. So I'm going to sign off by saying thank you. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for the amazing support you give my channel. All of your uh, comments and all your thumbs ups and all your subscriptions means the world to me. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe because we have a load more work to do on this particular build. And I will be building another tank and I will let you guys know a little bit further down the line what my plans are regarding that. And so I'll sign off finally by saying I'm Tony. I love building these amazing kits from Armatech. Thanks for joining me today and I look forward to my next session.